vom veni la ziua se apropie. În urma cu 125 de ani a avut loc primul congres ionist în Basel. Atunci, Theodor Herz a convocat peste 200 de evrei lideri din toată Europa pentru a visa împreună și pentru a discuta fezabilitatea formării unui stat evreu în patria străveche a poporului evreu în Palestina de atunci. După 125 de ani, statul evreu a devenit realitate. Astăzi, în raport european, veți vedea o discuție înregistrată în Parlamentul European din Bruxelles, în care se discută despre statul evreu privind spre viitor pentru a vedea ce reprezintă sionismul în prezent. One hundred and twenty-five years ago today, the first Zionist Congress took place in the Stadt Casino in Basel. This was when uh, Theodor Herzl uh, called together more than 200 Jewish leaders from around Europe to uh, dream together and to discuss the feasibility of a Jewish state in the ancestral homeland of the Jewish people in, in Palestine at the time. Uh, it was in this connection where Theodor Herzl said he was in Basel that I founded, created the Jewish state. 125 years later, the Jewish state is a reality, and um, I have just uh, arrived back from the 125th anniversary in Basel. Uh, I'm excited to uh, continue this discussion about the, uh, the Jewish state today, looking into the future, what does Zionism mean today? And uh, my name is Thomas Sandel from the European Coalition for Israel. And with me in this edition of the uh, European Report, I have Marco Campomenosi from Italy, my right hand son, and uh, Alex Benjamin uh, on my left hand side. If I start with you, Marco, uh, we met uh, last time in, in April in, in Sanremo, in your region, Liguria, mm -hmm. where we um, uh, remembered the uh, anniversary, the 102nd anniversary of the Sanremo resolution, which in a way is uh, connected to what happened in Basel already in 1897. You can say that the, the Zionist idea was uh, conceived in Basel and, and later it came into fruition. Uh, through the Balfour Declaration, through Sanremo, and, and later with the declaration of a Jewish state. But uh, as an Italian, when you think back of the, these 125 years, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it, 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 we have met in, uh, in April in, in Italy, in my region, uh, in Sanremo, at the border with, uh, with France, where uh, we can say historians are also declaring this it was one of the first events in 1922 um, during which uh, the state of israel the idea of a state of israel has been has been uh, has been uh, formulated uh, basel has maybe another kind of importance it's maybe the moment uh, thanks to uh, theodor herzl uh, during which uh, uh, an idea has become also a political movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've also seen a, a declaration of Thomas uh, uh, Herz, when uh, Theodor Herz, uh, we de he declared everyone will perceive it. Mm -hmm. he, he declared, uh, maybe in five years, he, <laughs> it was a bit too much optimistic uh, because it was at the end of the 19th century, mm -hmm. but in 50 years, uh, surely. And this was uh, what, what has happened. So uh, it, uh, it, it was a great pleasure for me to host in my region, in Sanremo, uh, the the ambassador of Israel. We have had uh, interesting meetings. We also with uh, people um, uh, from England because England has had an important role uh, in this case. So, yes. yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a member uh, of a European Parliament coming from Northwest Italy. So for me, it's important to bring uh, all these kind of events uh, in order to have even more knowledge to, to the people. Because even uh, in Sanremo, no, no, not all the people is informed about yeah. the importance of this. But maybe we could also speak about La Spets and other projects uh, we are working on. I can, I can attest to what you said. Um, uh, in Basel at this uh, anniversary, I spoke with, uh, also with many Jewish activists, and I, we spoke about San Remo, and, and they said, San, San what? So, so I believe there's still uh, a lot of work to be done to put San Remo on the same map as, uh, as Basel and, and the Balfour Declaration. And, and talking about the Balfour Declaration, we come over to, to Britain, and, and uh, Alex, uh, you, have, you, you are one of the champions here in the European Parliament. 
moment, uh, standing up for, for the Jewish state, and, and you've done so for, for many years, and I know that Israel is something which is uh, very close to your heart, but so what are your thoughts? On the 125th anniversary, I can only echo what both you and, and Marco were saying just a couple of minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Theodore Herzl in trademark chutzpah style said, uh, you know, I founded the state of Israel. Yeah. And uh, Marco was just alluding to it. He said, people won't perceive it now, but five, 50 years time they will. Well, of course he was right. And when I think of Israel, I was there in July. Mm -hmm. Whenever I come in, I always ask for a window seat. It's one of the few things that I do when I'm flying into Israel is ask for a window seat. Why? Because when I fly in over Tel Aviv, and I think about what was there at the time of Herzl and what there is there today, the skyline, the modern metropolis, it makes me feel incredibly proud. Likewise, when I go up to Jerusalem, which was a, for all intents and purposes, a backwater under Jordanian control, neglected, unloved, and, and now it's really a shining city, a, a capital of Israel. It makes, me, it makes me very proud, but I'm also, I always keep in mind that at the back of it all, there's a sadness, uh, and the sadness was the circumstances that existed in Europe at the time that led Theodore Herzl mm -hmm. to come to the conclusion yeah. that we needed a Jewish state mm -hmm. and that, that being Jewish and European weren't compatible. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to balance up mm -hmm. that dichotomy. I'm proud of a Jewish state, but I'm also glad that the circumstances don't exist anymore yeah. where it's as needed as it was in, yeah. in Herzl's time. Yeah. It's, it's uh, interesting uh, that you mentioned that uh, reflection that I have uh, after this uh, 125th anniversary is the level of security needed in Basel uh, during this conference. And I was thinking back and I said, well, I wonder how it was 125 years ago when Theodor Herzl came and it was quite spontaneous. I'm sure there were not as many military personnel and police and security guards as today. And of course, as you say, that makes one wonder why on earth still today is there such a need to protect Jews coming together in a, in a peaceful anniversary. So we always have to keep this in, in mind. Um, Marco, you, uh, as we mentioned, you come from a very special uh, region, uh, Liguria. Uh, you also mentioned the city of La Spezia, which has been called uh, a gateway to Zion, uh, going back to the days of the Exodus. Um, Italy uh, has always had a very special relationship with, with Israel. The Jewish community in Rome has been around for more than uh, 2,000 years. Uh, um, Italy is also going to elections in a, in a few weeks' time. Uh, this is perhaps not the time to, to, to analyze the elections, but um, what can you say about um, Israeli-Italian relations? Uh, and most importantly, how can they be strengthened? Uh, I've mentioned uh, positive uh, examples of what has happened in Italy, in Sanremo, in La Spezia. La Spezia was a base of uh, uh, many of the trips of Exodus ship uh, you know, that brought many, many, many people from Europe uh, to the land of Israel. And uh, the story, and I would invite people to, to, to also to look at the films uh, mm. made on, this, on these issues. And um, for us, it's very important to remember this. Mm. Uh, but uh, we also have to mention the responsibilities that Italians have had uh, during the Second World War uh, with the persecution, with, uh, with uh, laws uh, against, against uh, Israeli people. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, uh, uh, this was a shame, and uh, so the Italians uh, remember also this very well. Uh, but now uh, we are also working on many, many projects. Uh, I'm also mentioning the fact that, for example, the, the former government uh, as a, as a uh, missions in Israel because we are working together in important uh, topics uh, for the uh, future of the environmental, for example, for which uh, Israel has uh, had an importance, uh, an important role in the last decade mm -hmm. and for which we are working together in the use of water. You, we know all, uh, how much it will be important and how much it will be important for all the Mediterranean uh, areas uh, where 
the problem of uh, climate change uh, will be will be uh, rising up uh, more and more. Uh, and so I, I know very well that there are important projects uh, on this topic, but I, I, I think also we have to continue uh, by a cultural uh, point of view uh, to take uh, in importance with, uh, our heritage, cultural heritage, uh, and uh, also, for example, to, to organize uh, more tourism uh, between Israel and Italy, I Liguria especially, mm. because people have to know what has happened in, in these places. Uh, also, as we mentioned, in Sanremo and uh, in, uh, in La Spezia, but also why not in Basel, a city that I know very well in Switzerland, which is anyway not so far from our places, uh, because we have to spread this also to the young people. Uh, they have to know that what we have today, mm. if we today we can speak about the Abraham Accords, a mm. new nice uh, good relationships between Israel and and some of the states around, around uh, it, it's because we have made a lot of efforts. Maybe uh, people in Basel uh, were considered a bit, uh, how to say, um, visionary, mm. but now we have a concrete results of what they did, and uh, it's thanks to these people that we have these results today. Absolutely, and um, again, going back to Sanremo, uh, as we mentioned this show before, the uh, Sanremo resolution was signed in the Villa de Vachan. Yeah. And uh, we have, of course, this dream to speak in Herzl's term of, of seeing Villa de Vachan becoming something of a memorial site for, for uh, a Jewish heritage memorial site for two reasons. One is that this is uh, in some way where the Jewish state was uh, uh, recognized under international law for the first time, but also as, as you um, may remember that this was the headquarters of Gestapo during the war. Oh. So uh, there's so much symbolism in one and the same uh, uh, property and, and, and this is uh, perhaps not a long-term but a mid-term goal really that mm. uh, together with the region and the city we could do something there uh, long-term. Yeah. But um, Alex, coming back to, uh, to you uh, again, um, you, you, you mentioned how emotional you are when you fly into to Tel Aviv and, and, and we can hear in the way that you describe your feelings that this is something which is, um, again, very close to your heart. Uh, but you must also have been thought about the, the challenges. What are the challenges? And I, and I wouldn't say only for the Jewish state, but for the Jewish people today. Okay. Um, I mean, for the Jewish people, one of our biggest challenges is ongoing anti-Semitism, obviously. Um, another big challenge is, and there's no easy way of, 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 of saying it, but it's a problem which is across Europe, is a lot of people, migrants that are coming in, which have imported a hatred of either Israel or Jewish people from their, from their from the countries of which they're ironically mm -hmm. uh, are fleeing from. Mm -hmm. uh, so these these are these are the main challenges. Uh, I mean, as you note, you, you noted very very well. Why why do we have such security um, at at, uh, at hotels? Why is it that when I go to synagogue on a Saturday, uh, I have to explain to my daughter that there's an armed policeman outside? Why 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 are these things necessary? We need to look at the root causes of that. Um, in terms of Israel, uh, you would expect me to say security, and. Of course, security is a major problem, as is Iran. But I mean, we could do a whole separate program on Iran. But luckily, the state of Israel is a strong state militarily. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the, the, the biggest challenge is, uh, funny enough, what Marco was just talking about, water and mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. um, it's a time of year uh, we're coming up to Rosh Hashanah of a new year. And uh, some of your viewers might not be aware, but uh, uh, we have a standing prayer called the Amidar in Judaism, and we change it at the new year where we talk about uh, God providing dew for the land, mm -hmm. and then we, we pray for rain. And in fact, the second verse of our Shema, Shema Israel, mm -hmm. uh, talks about what happened if you diligently obey God's commandments, mm -hmm. and you'll be granted rain for your land at the proper time. Mm -hmm. It's central to us, this concept of water, and Israel, regrettably, doesn't have an awful lot of water. Mm -hmm. The Kinneret, or what's called Lake Galilee, mm -hmm. is getting lower and lower every year. 
thank goodness we have the innovations in terms of in terms of desalination plants, drip irrigation. Um, these are these are very very major challenges, and of course, water impacts food. So so these are the these are the real big challenges for Israel going forward. Like, what keeps me up at night isn't necessarily the security situation, mm -hmm. but it's how Israel can manage with a growing population, with limited water and limited natural resources. Would you, Alex, uh, because one, one of the issues that came up in, in Basel, also in the uh, keynote speech of the president, Isaac uh, uh, Herzog, was um, the issue of unity. And, and, and we know we live in a, in a, in a time of polarization uh, nationally, internationally. And, and obviously, this also affects the Jewish people. And there is the saying, of course, when this to Jews, there are three opinions. So um, looking at the diaspora, perhaps in the United States in particular, and, and, and the state of Israel, is, is this something that uh, would be of concern for you to keep that unity and, and, and keep the same vision? Uh, very much so. I think it's extremely important. Uh, I mean, for instance, I, I read yesterday there was a there was an op-ed in the New York Times uh, by somebody trying to say that you know you don't have to be uh, necessarily supportive of, of of Zionism to be a good Jew. Um, I fundamentally disagree with that position. I think the two go hand in hand. I don't think, I, I think the only, one of the main reasons that Jews can feel so comfortable in Europe today is because we have our insurance policy, which is a, which is the state of Israel. So I think unity is extremely important. I think that there is, uh, there are some people um, from different denominations who are making uh, the case that somehow Judaism or or Jewish people have lost their way in terms of human rights, mm -hmm. given the situation between Israel and the Palestinians. Again, I, uh, I again I, I fundamentally disagree with that. I believe you, you'll find the IDF and the way it conducts itself mm -hmm. is one of the most ethical armies in the world. Um, we saw in Operation Breaking Dawn very very recently mm -hmm. uh, that there's no no actions were taken when humans were put in the line of fire. So I think I think. Um, yeah, I think unity is, is, is the key to our success as a, as a people. And I, I like what you did say about uh, Zionism, and this was something that came up uh, time and time again and, and again in the president's speech, that we need to reclaim uh, Zionism, that you know, we should be proud of being Zionists, and, and, and uh, we may be aware that even in, in social media it has almost became, become a, a, a curse word. Absolutely. So, so um, I think there's a lot of work to be done, 120 five years on. Um, but uh, Marco, coming again back to, to the European Parliament and uh, the European Union, um, looking at EU-Israel uh, uh, relations, uh, since we last met, uh, things have taken a, a few steps in, in the right direction, one may say, with the uh, adoption of the uh, uh, EU Israel Council uh, uh, Association, and um, but at the at the same time that doesn't. I mean, there are a number of issues which which are of concern for me. Um, we we had. Uh, some of the, the highest leaders of the EU visiting Israel, which was fantastic. But at the same time, there was a release of EU funds to the Palestinian authorities uh, with no sets of, of conditionality. And, and I think a, a fight where, which we have been, and Alex, you have been involved in for, for many years, seems suddenly to have been sort of uh, lost or, or forgotten, or in a way just um, brushed to the side at the same time as they, you know, had a rapprochement with, um, uh, with the state of Israel. But um, besides that, I mean, how can the EU become a better friend of, uh, of Israel? I was one of the members uh, who signed the letter yeah. to the European Commission in order to restore the association uh, yeah. uh, with the EU, uh, with Israel, because mm -hmm. uh, it's too much important, but also for the practical reasons just mentioned mm -hmm. by Alex. Uh, he also mentioned the, the issue of the desalinization. Also, yeah. the major of my city, Geno, would like, would like to make something in this direction be, because it will be more and more important in future. And also, we have maybe to upgrade the rules uh, managing this, uh, these aspects uh, and to take example from Israel, for example, mm. as a state. Um, of course, uh, um, 
we, we have to remember that anti-Semitism is also something we have not uh, completely defeated. Mm -hmm. Even in my country a few days ago, there was a, a problem with a candidate of a party of a leftist side, but it could be of a rightist side. It's not an mm -hmm. attack to uh, my opponents mm -hmm. who made uh, unacceptable declarations. And all the political parties asked the leader of this uh, political party in order to replace this candidature, and it has been done without uh, any problem. In uh, 24 hours, this candidate oh. was put out of a list. And this oh. was a good example because there is a precise border um, uh, between what is acceptable, even uh, from people which is not supporting our point of view, and we, because we consider every political speculation, but we have to, to work together on many issues. I mentioned the Mediterranean is too much important, what is happening. Uh, some forces we are facing uh, aggressing other countries. Uh, we, we have to work on this uh, situation. Uh, even today I was speaking with the ambas Italian ambassador in Iraq, uh, the importance of a stabilization of countries and politics in, in the Middle East is too much important and Israel can give us a, a big example in this direction. Of course, uh, sometimes the European institutions say, give me the idea that they don't want to take a precise position. This is uh, a pity. I think that they could do more and they could uh, be a bit more, how to say, open in order to defend democracy. And of course, also Israel has to work in order, and I'm Italian, I know it's uh, so very complicated to have stable governments and people and, and ministers with which we could speak mm -hmm. for a long time and discuss together on projects uh, because uh, uh, political instability is also a problem in democracy but it's maybe because of democracies and uh, and we Italians can can speak a lot about this uh, we, we, we have also a situation which is not clear so uh, both sides may do something in order to work together better and uh, I think uh, also, every elected person can can give a. a uh, something in this direction. Uh, only a few months ago, we have had here a, a little conference, a little interview with you, with a, a, a diplomat from a Sunni country, yeah. uh, which uh, spoke and declared mm -hmm. things uh, for which uh, I would have never expected uh, mm -hmm. something in this way only a few years ago. So let's be optimistic because yeah. in future, I think there are a lot of uh, things for which we have to work all together and, uh, and uh, in order to help our people to work, uh, develop, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and do something positive for their society. Yes. Before I give over to you, Alex, I uh, also would like to, to mention, I think it's important, the uh, great work of Katarina von Schnurbein. She was uh, one of the keynote speakers in Basel as well and really received a standing ovation for what the European uh, Commission is doing to combat anti-Semitism. So uh, we do have many partners also within the European institutions, but I think it's um, up to friends like, like us, be it an elected leader or, or other side uh, of uh, an activist and an advocate like, like you and, and, and myself, Absolutely. <laughs> Alex. So um, your thoughts about how the EU could strengthen the relations with Israel at this point in time? Okay, first of all, before I get there, uh, just to say, Thomas, that we are delighted in my organization that we have a friend like you. Uh, and we need more friends like you, we need more friends like Marco. So I just wanted to say you're, a, you're an integral part mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, you're as, as, as much a Zionist as I am, if not more so, so, so thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what Europe could do, I want to break it down into two chunks. First of all, Europe's doing already a lot with Israel. We spoke about water, we speak. Israel is very much embedded in R&D, research and development, uh, in innovations in health, in pharma, and there are a number of projects ongoing at an EU level. But the problem that we have is that you've got a European External Action Service, mm -hmm. which is still wedded and is almost pretending that the Abraham Accords didn't happen. Yeah. And they're stuck in a narrative which mm -hmm. is, to my mind, 15 or 20 years old, mm -hmm. linking progress and access to the EU institutions and, and the benefits that's, that flow from it to somehow progress in the, uh, in, in the peace process, yeah. which I think is a mistake yeah. because the peace process isn't gonna be sorted out overnight. This yeah. is a long process. It's been going on 
uh, since I was knee high to a grasshopper, and I mean, I hope uh, it can be resolved, but I don't, I, I don't necessarily think it will. Why then would you make a direct linkage between peace processing and 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 that when there are so many yeah. benefits for cooperation between the EU and Israel? For instance, one one example: drip irrigation. A farmer, uh, uh, Marco. I know one of your one of your assistants is from Seville in Spain. So you've got you've got uh, an area there which is which is it doesn't have much water, yeah. and they're using Israeli technology that they know exactly how many drips it takes to properly nourish a fruit and 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 save a save a precious resource. I think if they spent less time obsessing about the mm. peace process and more time on the, the benefits which come to Israel. And, and, and a final point, Thomas, if I may. Marco was talking about instability. Actually, the instability for me is one of the hallmarks of a democracy. Okay. Uh, I, re I read a great book recently and the guy said, what makes a democracy a democracy? And the answer was, I, I asked this question around the family table and many interesting answers. The answer was, uh, from him, was, insta was uncertainty. He says, if you can be certain of the outcome of, of every election, you don't live in a democracy. So don't worry about Italy. Italy is a fantastic democracy, uh, and certainly Israel is as well. I don't think anyone would predict the outcome of any Israeli election. Absolutely. We have uh, one minute left of the show. I still, so I can only give you 20 seconds to answer a very complicated uh, question. What is the next, next uh, as big Zionist dream. Maybe we start with Alex. Sure, let me just be as brief as possible. I mean, whenever I think of the next Zionist dream, mm -hmm. I think of Isaiah, mm -hmm. and I think of that the wolf will live with the lamb. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really, really hope. Mm -hmm. That's the next stage of a Zionist dream. Oh, that's beautiful. Marco. We have a, a link, which is very important. I already mentioned it's uh, Mediterranean. And uh, we have to develop more and more democracy values, uh, economy, uh, good uh, culture uh, in this area, which is fantastic, which is uh, important for all the rest of the world. We have to be uh, important also and give good examples to solve and to help to solve the problems, economical problems, but also political problems for all the rest of the world. Because in some cases we 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 are not a good example for the people. We, we have to be united. We have to work together. Then we could uh, also, as we say in democracy, fight for uh, some issues. But on the most important ones, we have to work together. And Mediterranean and the history of Mediterranean can teach us a lot of things. Thank you, gentlemen. This has been another fascinating show, the European Report. Let me conclude by uh, uh, just quoting one of the taglines from Basel. He said, "125 years." of Zionism, it's only the beginning. My name is Thomas Sandel, this is the European Report. See you again next month.